Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week with the very first female-led superhero film from Marvel called Captain Marvel. Yeah, the story centers in the 90s about a U.S. Air Base uh, female pilot named Carol Danvers, and it follows how she becomes Captain Marvel after Earth is caught in the center of a galactic conflict between two alien worlds that's happening. And, wow, it's electrifyingly amazing. No doubt about it, um, I really enjoy it. And I'm glad to see that it got made and we waited this long to finally see what's going to happen next because we're already preparing for Avengers Endgame so we're going to get to see uh, Captain Marvel um, going after Thanos if that does happen so we're preparing for it <laughs> anyway and yes it is the highest grossing film to come out this year that along with Alita Battle Angel, which I know people definitely started a controversy with uh, hashtag Alita Challenge. And, well, they try to do that, and you know, hey, they, but not as much as they could. I mean, still, I, I really did enjoy Alita Battle Angel too. And I did enjoy the Lego Movie 2, the second part, to come out that year as well. And, I still need to check out uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3, though, which is also doing well. And, uh, and I know they had a controversy just recently about Rotten Tomatoes, and then some reviews coming from everyone saying that about what uh, Brie Larson said through the interviews, and oh, it involves feminism and all that stuff. Um, I don't want to follow that that's going around. I mean the fact is with all this PC culture going around that's making it that's making things worse I just rather you know escape from all that and rather just go out and see a movie that I'm gonna enjoy and have fun with instead of being bored because this is exactly what's what's going on these days and I don't want that anymore but with that aside it's a lot better than the controversy turned out to be. And actually, it's a lot better than what the trailer turned out to be, too. I mean, the teaser was actually a lot better when I saw it. Because, yes, there is a scene in the movie where she does beat up an old lady. I hate scenes like that. Every time I see scenes like this, especially in a Marvel movie, it just feels... It really eats me up inside. And Even though they're trying to be funny... It's to me it's just cruel and petty. It's just like seeing an animal getting killed on screen. I mean, it's so horrifying. I mean I had that problem with uh, Daredevil too when when I saw uh, the villain Bullseye actually flicking a peanut and then it went straight into the old lady's throat and she dies. You know or was in the airplane, or, or having to see uh, a two elderly couple who just save uh, Logan, you know, Wolverine, in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and they both got killed uh, during the blast. I mean, jeez. Enough with that shit. Um, anyway. And... I, I don't want to deal with that. So, um, <laughs> not a great way to start the video, but that's okay. Um, also, has a good dedication to Stan Lee. Uh, if if you um, get there on time to see the beginning of the movie, you'll be able to see the Marvel Studios logo, and they show um, Stan Lee in every shot, and, and then they at the end it just says "Thank you, Stan." So. I actually clapped when I saw that. But nevertheless, I do want to see the film as I expected because, you know, I was really looking forward to it the moment they announced it. 
and I want to see what happens next. So anyway, let's get to the review. It stars Brie Larson from Consco Island, as well as Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Samuel Jackson, also from Consco Island. <laughs> yeah, what are the odds here? But he's also in several movies like Pulp Fiction, The Avengers, and Iron Man movies, and many others in his entire career. Ben Mendelsohn, who was the villain in the movie Ready Player One, which I love that movie. Dijman Hansu, you know, has been known for doing films like Amistad, and Push, and all that. Lee Pace, um, yeah, from Push and Daisies, the TV show. He was also in Gardens of the Galaxy. Um, Lishana Lynch, uh, Gemma Chan, Annette Benning, yes, Annette Benning from American Beauty, uh, The American Presidents, even The Great Outdoors, you know, with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd, Clark Gregg um, from The Avengers, and as well as the TV series uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Jude Law from Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, as well as Sherlock Holmes, um, Artificial Intelligence, and many others. And we also have uh, a cat named Goose, yeah, named after Top Gun, <laughs> the character that, uh, that Anthony Edwards played. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, yeah, it's based on the comic book by Stan Lee, Gene Colan, as well as uh, Carol Danvers, real Carol Danvers. Uh, Roy Thomas and Gene uh, Colan. And it's co written and directed by Anna Borden and Ryan Fleck, the team behind the movie Half Nelson with Ryan Gosling. Came out in 2006. The movie begins set in 1995. Yes, the year that my favorite movie, Heavyweights, came out, along with Toy Story, Casper, <laughs> yeah, the live action movie, uh, Babin Forever, Heat, um, Dead Man Walking, and all the other films that came out. <laughs> Plus a lot of 90s music like pop, grunge, alternative rock, and many others. <laughs> so anyway, it focuses on a Captain Planet of Hala called Queed Empire. That's where we meet Star Force member, simply known as Verse. Her real name is Carol Danvers, who's played by Brie Larson, who suffers from amnesia and recurring nightmares involving an older, mysterious woman. Who turned out to be the name of Dr. Wendy Larson, who's played by Annette Benny. Or at this rate, Jan Rogue. It's her mentor and commander who trains her to control her abilities, while the Supreme Intelligence, which is the, um, the official intelligence that rules Creed, urges her to keep her emotions in check to see how this will happen. Yeah, and plus she also has blue blood and that controls all the way. So now she's becoming more powerful than ever before. So during the mission to rescue an undercover operative which has a group called Skulls, an alien shapeshifter with whom the Creed are, are at war, it was being captured by a Skull commander named Talos, who's uh, played by a uh, Ben Mendelsohn, um, taken aboard from the earthbound vessel and was subject to a memory plogue. So she actually escapes and crash lands into, you're going to love this, a blockbuster video in Bally Plaza, North Hollywood. I don't think we ever had a blockbuster video there in the 90s. Uh, in that location. I mean, not that I'm aware of. 
because I was a kid back then too, and I remember we were going to uh, to North Hollywood, just going straight into uh, my dad's place at the time, yeah, because he was he, he was living at BNI's at the time, so. Um, but I remember there were a lot of shops over there that they had, and it was across the street from the, f the movie theater, which is Bally Plaza Six, uh, which is now owned by Regency Feeders. It used to be a United Artists Feeder at the time. So this is like the second movie where that movie feeder was spotted. <laughs> but what do you know? They're going to be playing Captain Marvel there later. <laughs> well, anyway, when when um, Carol Danvers um, fell into uh, the local blockbuster video, this is where he saw all these VHS tapes around. He even saw a cut-out advertisement for True Lies. Yeah, this would have been at the time that the VHS uh, of that movie came out. And she accidentally shot uh, the the cutout board of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger in that scene. Then she got out. She started spotting all these VHS tapes around. And then she she got out and she was trying to find something to uh, to get some communication here. So she went to Radio Shack. <laughs> yeah, Radio Shack, just to find a better way. And then you saw Game Boy and all that in, inside the uh, the phone booth. Trying to make some contact here, and that's where we see the agents of Shield uh, appearing with Nick Fury and Phil Coulson, which, by the way, they were all de-aged, digital de-aged, um, just to make them look more younger than ever before. And they're both played by Samuel Jackson and Clark Gregg, whose investigation was interrupted by a skull attack. Yes, this is where we see. A, a random person in disguise, you know, starting to shoot uh, Carol Danvers. So that's where we get to a huge chase. And I know I made a mistake when I was on Facebook at the time, and, and I had to write it down when I saw the trailer. Actually, it was a chase all the way straight into the subway. And once she was there, that's when um, we saw the old lady. She actually left um, passing by like I thought they weren't going to show that scene. So. But I was wrong. They did show the scene. That's when we noticed that that the, um, the skulls was disguised as an old lady. And that's when, that's when we see um, her beating the shit out of him. Punching her in the face. Which is just a, a villain underneath it all. And then Skull suddenly disguised uh, himself as a as a man and and any other so he was about to go after him uh, even worse was that um, Nick Fury um, was already uh, driving around you know chasing the uh, the creature only to find out that uh, Phil Coulson was still at Valley Plaza what yeah at Blockbuster <laughs> So it turns out that yes, uh, it was another skull in the skies, and this is where he was about to uh, attack uh, Nick Fury, and then it led to a crash. It actually killed him. So Carol re recovers a crystal containing her extract memory, and Talos, who's disguised as a shield director Keller, uh, was ordered Fury to work with um, Carol and keep keep an eye on her. So using her extract memories that she has, um, they both went to Project Pegasus installation inside the US Air Force Base where they discovered that she was a pilot. Presumed that she had died in 1989 while testing an experiment jet engine designed by Dr. Wendy Larson. Which she recognized uh, as a woman from her nightmares. So the S.H.I.E.L.D. team, led by Talos, was about to go after both of them. Of course, Talos disguised as Keller, just trying to capture them, but they soon escape in a cargo jet with Larson's stowaway, a, uh, a brownish uh, white cat named Goose. Very cute. So they fly all the way to Louisiana, where 
she meets the former pilot, which is the last person to see both of them alive, named Maria Rimbaud, who's uh, played by Lashana Lynch. She also has a daughter, her two, named Monica. As she was once close to them, her real, that's where we begin to reveal her real name. Ta Talos arrived and reveals the skulls are refugees uh, searching for a new home. And Larson was Marvell, so which is a renegade of, of the Creed scientists helping helping them out. But Talos plays a recover recording directly from Lawson's jet, pumping that Danvers um, remembers the crash completely, but attempts to destroy the engine energy's core, so that's where, you know, in order to keep it from Creed, and this is where she was being killed by Young Wog before she could, actually destroying the engine herself. Danvers absorbed the energy from the explosion, and that's where she had all the powers that she was given, all the ability, but just lost her memory. So, so during their search, they were going straight to Lawson's cloak uh, laboratory that's orbiting Earth. This is where she hit all the, the several skulls, including Talos family, and this is as well as the Tesseract that was joining in which is the power source of the energy core, so it was up to them to actually save um, the Skulls, because they turned out that they're not really bad people at all. But that was during the war that was going on, and they're trying to find a way to stop um, the real villains, the ones that that actually trained uh, Carol, and by using her powers and trying to start a war that's happening, I'm coming. And I guess just in case, you know, with the help for Nick Fury, that they actually uh, added a modified pager to contact, and this is where we're going to lead to the story that follows. Okay. Um, but definitely is electrifyingly uh, amazing. I love the movie, as it turned out to be, and had a great cast right there. I thought Brie Larson did a, an amazing job playing. You know, both um, Captain Marvel and Carol Danvers, or in some case, or maybe Free, I guess you could say, simply known as Verse. You know, trying to recover from the uh, energy cord that just shot from the engine and then led to all this that's going around. But in the end, she becomes more powerful than ever before. And it and Samuel Jackson, you know, replies in as uh, Nick Fury, you know, before, you know, he got an eye patch. Um, yeah, this is where we begin to find out if he, you know, before he does uh, lose an eye. But we don't want to get there. <laughs> so you got to see the movie for yourself. Uh, but I, I got to say, he did stole the show, too. Um, with him teaming up with... Um, Carol Danvers, I thought it really worked. They make a great team. <laughs> even though they, they always, <laughs> even though he does team up with um, Agent Coulson. Yeah. But it's cool. But the cat, on the other hand, yes, Goose, I mean, it was so cute. I love that cat. <laughs> you know, that cat almost reminds me a little bit like, um, like the cat feet from the TV show uh, Early Edition. Yeah, it was exactly like that cat. Um, you know, the one that comes around, you know, whenever they brought him the newspaper on his doorstep, which let him see the future. Yeah. I love Early Edition, and that's the show that stars Cal Chandler, who plays Gary Hobson, who's trying to save victims trying to prevent all these events that's happening, just to set things right, that sort of thing. So yeah, he becomes a hero, a likely hero. <laughs> well, I just read a hero. But I guess for the war that was going around, you know, between the, the Skulls and 
and the humans uh, were really a, a big thing to happen. But then, in the end, you begin to trust them because the whole thing was a lie and, and the whole thing was just set up. Some great action scenes. I mean, you got to see uh, you got to see Captain Marvel um, you know, kicking ass too. I mean. Yeah, I, I love that fight scene, you know, even at the beginning, too, where, uh, with the skulls, and yes, she even started mocking them, too, you know, when they scream, and, or I even love the, the other scene, too, where they're fighting against all the other ones, this is where she does use her energy, and, or even that scene at the end where she does uh, come in disguise, you know, wearing that mask, using all of her, her powers to, to stop uh, the war that was going on you know with all these missiles that were launching stops them all the way yeah. <laughs> and plus um, I even love the fact that she was wearing a, uh, a nine inch nail shirt you know with a jacket so just trying to give it a 90's look because of course you know She's very, she does look like she came from the 90s. Um, and it does have a mixture of 90s music that they put in. Um, I would say the last song they put out uh, during the end credits was actually from 1998. Uh, um, it was a song called uh, Celebrity Skin by Hole. Yeah, Courtney Love's uh, band that she had. As we all know, Courtney Love was was once a cup once a couple with um, Kurt Cobain who committed suicide in '94. Yeah, of course, Kurt Cobain, the lead singer of and guitarist of of the band called Nirvana. They even played a Nirvana song in the movie. And there's even uh, a TLC song, uh, "Waterfalls," and uh, even a No Doubt song too. <laughs> Yeah, they're in that fight scene. That's cool. And of course, the Star Force, uh, which is led by Young Rogue, played by Drew Law, you know, who became the mentor for Carol Danvers, or simply Verse, which joined in with uh, his team, which includes Min Irva, you know, the sniper, and uh, Karaf, uh, the mercenary. And second command, so they're about to join in just to, to fight against uh, the war that was about to happen. You know, between the all the uh, the skulls around. You know, they were in disguises. And then we begin to find out the true story behind all of this. And yes, they turn out to be the villains. Yes, I spoiled the surprise, but that's okay. I mean, it's already a big hit. Everyone saw it, so I think everyone already knows. But for those who haven't, I'm sorry. I mean, the story does tend to go uh, pretty slow at times, but that's the idea. We're trying to get back to her memory and trying to remember everything that she saw or what she remembers. Still, in the end, well, she did what she could, and she finally uh, she become a lot stronger than ever before. Instead of being weak when she was a kid, um, as and then when she started growing up, but she never gave up. But anyway, I can't wait to see her again in Avengers Endgame and see what happens uh, next. I mean. Who knows? I mean, I hope she does stop uh, Fano's. Otherwise, it might be someone else. So. But hey, it, it hasn't been out yet, so there would be. So anyway, that's Captain Marvel, and I give the movie four and a half stars. Yeah, despite of uh, just a little bit of issues here, but that's okay. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.